Hi, everybody. So in this video, we're going to do two practice problems. One is based on Jacob Clifford's practice problems, so it's important that you watch that video. I'm going to go ahead and link it above in the, in the, um, in the video window here, but go ahead and check it out. It's, it's about five minutes long, but it's a really helpful idea to try to understand taxes. Um, once you've done that, you should be able to do these six problems up here, and then come back to this video, and we'll do this question about pizza. Okay, so hopefully you were able to do this quick practice problems up here. Um, he's, he does the problem about halfway through that video. So now we're going to take a look at the price of pizza, uh, quantity demanded of pizza, sorry, and quantity supplied of pizza. And this is a market in University City um, for pizza. And, and it says, consider that you city officials decide to impose a $4 per pizza tax on, on pizza. Um, what's the quantity of pizza bought and sold before the imposition of the tax after blah, 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 blah. The first thing maybe that students sometimes struggle with is like, what do we even do with these numbers? And you can and you can solve it in one of two ways, right? You can solve it by just looking at the table, or you can solve it by drawing a graph using the numbers on the graph. Now, me personally, um, I'm at the point where I can just do it using this table. So I'm going to do that first, and then at the end, I'm going to go back and construct the graph and walk you through it that way. So, um, so hopefully, you know, one of those two methods works. All right. So the first one says the quantity of pizza bought and sold before the imposition of the tax. And we know that when there's no tax and that this is kind of a, a, a nice competitive market, then that quantity is going to be where quantity of pizza demanded equals quantity of pizza supplied. So we're going to look in the, the two columns there and see where are they equal, right? Two, four, three, three, three. There we go. Okay. So that's just the quantity that's bought and sold before. So it's three and three. And then it's going to say, what's the price paid before the tax? Well, it's $7 because that's the price at where quantity demanded equal quantity supplied. Hopefully you got that. Now, then this says calculate consumer and producer surplus before the tax. And again, this is going to require you to visualize a picture. And it can be a little bit difficult to do that. Um, so actually, I take it back. I'm going to go ahead and just draw this graph so that you have a point of reference to see what we're talking about. Now we know that this is quantity is three and price is seven, but we need to know this point and we need to know this point on the triangle. So where does quantity demanded equal zero at what price? Well, it, it happens quantity demanded equals zero at price 10. So that's up there. And so now we can actually figure out consumer surplus, right? The height of the triangle is three, the base of the triangle is three, so that's nine divided by two is four and a half. Um, so we could say $4.50, and now we need to know this point down here to do producer surplus. And so we have to look for where does quantity supplied equal zero. The first time is at here, zero, so that's at four. This one's at four, so the height of that triangle is three, and the base of that triangle is also three, so again, it's $4.50. What's the quantity of pizza bought and sold after the tax? Now, this is sometimes where students really start to struggle with this. Remember that a tax, an excise tax, is just adding additional per unit costs, which shifts that supply curve vertically up by the amount of the tax. By the tax. Now, visually, right, when we learned about shifting supply and demand, we said that a tax shifts supply to the left because it's a decrease. Well, left and vertically up are basically the same thing. And so we know that this curve is going to shift up somehow. It's going to be S tax. And the vertical shift here is going to be in the amount of four. Well, how do we know that? It says four right here. Now, this is where sometimes students struggle a little bit. It's like, well, how do I know where all the points are? Well, it, you, you can, right? Think about it in the table. You're looking for a point where, where this new point with X, with this point, the demand curve, right? Think about this demand curve is $4 separated from the supply curve, and it's gonna be at a quantity less than three, right? So somewhere at a quantity less than three, there's gonna be a, a wedge between the two prices, right? Because this price and this price have $4 between them. So we're gonna look for a pair of numbers here where they're $4 apart, where the quantity demanded is less than um, or sorry, the quantity demanded is higher than, is, is the same here as the quantity supplied. I had a brain fart there. So you're looking for where quantity demanded and quantity supplied are equal to each other, but the prices, the prices are $4 apart. So this is a little, a little tough to do, but if you look here at one pizza demanded at $9, and then you go down $4 from that, and you see at five, there's one pizza supplied. 
And so you can see that there's a $4 wedge between the quantity demanded and quantity supplies. And that's actually where we're gonna be is nine and five, and then it's at one pizza. Now again, if you're like, how in the heck did he see that? You could go through and plot the points, right? You can go through and plot and see where these points end up being. Um, or again, you can look for where is there a wedge between the quantity demanded and quantity supplied where it's $4 apart. Um, and that, that requires some like abstract thinking that's pretty tough, but you know, we'll get there. So again, you can either do it by plotting all the points out or you can look at that table and look for the wedge. So we know that there's one pizza sold, what's the price paid? Well, we just look at the table and we go, well, they pay nine, right? So they pay nine. How much do the producers get to eat? Well, nine minus four is five. And in fact, we know that it's five because it tells you right here, quantity supplied is one at $5. Calculate the consumer surplus after the tax. Well, there's only, you know, one is the height now because we go from 10 to nine and then over to one. And so it's only 50 cents of consumer surplus. Producer surplus is going from five to four and then over to one. So it's the height of the triangle is one times the base is one. And again, divide by two, 50 cents. And the deadweight loss on this one. Now, now think about, right, we've got a couple of things going on here, but you can think it's this area of two triangles, okay? And, and so we can say the height of one triangle is two, we go from nine to seven, and then over is two for the, for the base. So that's four um, divided by two is two. And so the top, the top half of this triangle is two. The bottom half of this triangle is seven to five is two, and over is two, so that one's also two. So the total deadweight loss is $4. How much tax revenue does University City earn from the tax? Well, how many pizzas are bought and sold under the tax? Just one, right? Remember it says right here, one pizza, and it's per unit, so one times $4 is $4. All right, hopefully this helped you. I'll see you next time. Bye.